Robinson, we'll learn about how we can use the InfluxDB v3 Java client library, and this is part of the client library series. The client library series is brought to you by InfluxDB University. InfluxDB University offers free and free live and self-paced training on a variety of topics, including InfluxDB v3, client libraries, data science tools, and so much more. It's entirely free and allows you to earn badges and share those badges on LinkedIn so you can share your accomplishments. But today we're focusing on the InfluxDB v3 Java client library. We'll talk about the requirements you need to get started using it, how to write data to InfluxDB 3 using it, how to query data from InfluxDB v3, and additional places where you can get resources um, and help. So what does the Java client library look like? Well, it's a software package that provides a set of tools and functions for interacting with InfluxDB v3 using the Java programming language. And what it allows developers to do is efficiently query and write time series data to and from InfluxDB. And that helps simplify the integration of InfluxDB into your Java applications. And there are certain advantages that come with using it. Uh, primarily, one of the big ones is the query advantages, because the Java client library wraps the Apache Arrow flight client in a convenient InfluxDB v3 interface. And that allows any developer to query InfluxDB v3 with SQL or InfluxQL. And you query using uh, the Apache Arrow format and the flight gRPC protocol as well. And that's important because that protocol in that format helps enable uh, really efficient serialization and deserialization of your data, as well as bidirectional streaming, which means that you as the user get to have a way to transport really large data sets uh, over network interface incredibly efficiently. And how does the client library work? Well, essentially the main components of it are the right API endpoint. This is the same endpoint that has existed for previous versions of InfluxDB. And you write to that endpoint with the line protocol format. Line protocol is the ingest format for InfluxDB. And queries are implemented via the Apache Arrow flight client library, as I mentioned, and utilize the Arrow format and flight gRPC protocol. So let's talk about requirements. So in order to use this client library, you'll need a couple things. The first is the InfluxDB cloud account, v3 account. Then you'll need to create a database. Uh, this is also referred to as a bucket, same thing. And last but not least, you'll need an authentication token so that you can actually write and query to and from that bucket. Uh, and for Java, you'll either need Java 11 at a minimum, um, and this client library is compatible up to and including Java 20. Um, also, there are some JDK internals that must be exposed, and you do so by adding the following line. So let's actually talk about how we can create a database and an authentication token. This is what the InfluxDB UI looks like, and we'll navigate to the buckets page from the left-hand navigation menu. Then we'll say create bucket. We'll give our bucket a name and also set a data retention preference or how long we automatically want to be storing that data for. Then we can go ahead and create a token by navigating to the API tokens page, click generate API token. Just create an all access token when you're first getting started to make your life easier. And uh, go ahead and copy that to the clipboard and you're ready to go. So now let's talk about installation. So you'll need to add um, the client either with Maven or Gradle, and this is what adding that dependency looks like. And so now we're ready to go ahead and actually write data. And in order to do that, we'll need to import our client package. Then we'll need to, you know, add our URL and our database name or bucket name and our authentication token. And then we'll uh, initialize our client with them. So here's an example of that. This is pretty much just boilerplate. But now we have a client that we are ready to use. So we can actually go ahead and write data. And uh, one thing we'll do is write data with the point method. So we can use the write point method to create a point object. And it's important to note too that we can also append points to um, an object and write multiple points simultaneously. So here's an example of writing just one point. We say point dot measurement, temperature, that a measurement is the same thing as a table in uh, InfluxDB or SQL. Um, and then a tag is just a column. Uh, the location uh, with the the value of, in that column being west, and the temperature value, the value column having a actual numerical value of fifty five point one five, and we also set a timestamp, and then we can just pass that point uh, into the right point method and go ahead and write that point in FlexDB, and we can write multiple uh, records um, with uh, write records. 
method as opposed to the write record method. Um, but we can use this method to write line protocol data directly. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, so this is what line protocol looks like. Um, basically, uh, we have a temperature followed by a comma with our tag values that are common, uh, key pairs that are common separated. Then we have a space for our fields. And fields and tags, they all convert into columns into InfluxDB. So they're essentially the same, but uh, basically users use them to organize their data more effectively. Usually do users will put their metadata as tags, so like things like location um, or host or something like that. And then actual meet numerical value will be your fields. Um, and then we can pass that record into the right record method and write it directly to InfluxDB. So while tags and fields should be thought of as columns in a table in InfluxDB and measurements should be thought of as the table name, there is one important distinction between them, which is only relevant when it comes to upserting your data. So it's important to note that you can upsert a field, but not a tag. So for example, uh, let's say we have the two these two lines of line protocol. They're exactly identical, including the timestamp, except for the value. This field here, um, this value field, has a value of 60 in the first uh, point, and in the second point, it's 60.02. So we simply appended a two value. And in this instance, we will actually upsert the field value uh, and overwrite that previous value with our new 60.02 value. However, if we add a 2 to our tag value um, of north and change that to north 2 and everything else is identical in our point, in this case we're not going to actually upsert that value, we're simply going to add more tag values to that location column in our table. So that's the one difference to be aware of. Now let's talk about how we can query data. So we can query data using SQL and basically what we're going to do there is create our SQL query. So in this case, we're selecting time, location, and value from our temperature measurement or table. And we'll order by time and maybe just limit the first 10, 10 values. And then we can actually use the, the query method to pass in that SQL query and query and return our results. Similarly, we can query an InfluxQL. InfluxQL is a SQL-like query language that was specifically designed for InfluxDB, but they're very similar. And in this case, we will um, create our InfluxQL query, and we'll also include query options as a part of our query um, method. So we'll not only pass our in our InfluxQL query, but also um, specify that we want to uh, use the query options of Influx underscore QL. And then we can go ahead and print out our results as well. Finally, I want to talk about some additional places where you can get help and get more resources to learn more things about the Java client. So to see a full code example of how to write different record types, line protocols, etc., and querying with SQL as well as InfluxQL, um, you can visit the following URL, github.com slash influxcommunity dot slash influxdb um, hyphen Java, and look for some examples there. Uh, in general, all of the client libraries are maintained in the Influx community organization. Um, so I would just recommend going to influx, github.com slash Influx community slash Influx DB3 uh, hyphen Java. And um, also uh, our docs are fantastic. So docs.influxdata.com. Um, you can pick your uh, offering, whether that's cloud dedicated or serverless. Um, and look at all of the client libraries and all the documentation that's available there. I also want to encourage you to join our Slack, Slack community workspace at InfluxData.com slash Slack. Please join there and ask any questions you have related to InfluxDB v3, JavaScript, Java, Python, Go, C Sharp, any of the client libraries really, or anything else related to InfluxDB. I also encourage you to ask questions on our forums at community.influxdata.com. And also, yeah, check out our docs and our blogs. There's a bunch of tutorials for how to use client libraries and do a bunch of fun things with InfluxDB. And Influx community doesn't only just have um, all the client libraries, but it also has a bunch of code examples for how to use InfluxDB with Kafka, with Superset, with Tableau, with stream processing tools, uh, business intelligence tools, IoT projects. So if you're just looking for inspiration um, with regards to what you can do with InfluxDB, that's a great resource. Last but not least, get started yourself by uh, following the URL or going to InfluxData.com. 
Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you in other um, InfluxDB University lessons. Bye.